And Your Honor, there were portions of the Tierra Jones case served in discovery. The pictures were served on May 22nd, 2023. The recordings were served in discovery 12. I'm trying to find the exact date of when. And so the pictures were served in May 22nd, 2023. And there were some initial reports served on that same date. Not the lead detective's report, but like. Okay, so great. I was actually asking about the letters. So the letters. The things that were brought up this morning. So it does not appear that either letter was served. All right, then y'all don't intend to use those, right? We don't have to use those. Okay. So I'm just trying to sort everything out before we have a jury in here. I'm trying to understand. My client gave a statement as a victim. I don't know if the state. I understand the state's not intending to use the letters. Is the state intending to use my state, my client's statements at all? I think Mr. Sharp asked me that yesterday. I advise that we will not be using. We will not. We don't intend to play his statement. We do intend to ask the detectives. The detective, whether or not Mr. Stilwell made a statement. How many statements he made. Two at the hospital. One three days later. I mean, excuse me. One about a month and a half later. In the second interview, he gave more details about the incident in which he was a victim. And my intentions, so I can complete the story and make sure that the jury understands that he subsequently recanted that statement. But that is what's in that letter that I provided to Mr. Sharp last night. That second letter, he recants everything he told the police. The second letter that Mr. Sharp has never until last night gotten notice of. Correct. And so we cannot put that in. But I would thought that Mr. Sharp would want the jury to know that his client took that back or took his statement back. But if he does that, we have no issue not talking about the second letter. So my understanding of the rules of evidence. First of all, I agree and I appreciate that the letter is not coming in because it was not provided in discovery. But my understanding of the rules of evidence. I don't know why. These are no ways admissions. These are statements my client made about. I'm going to say wholly unrelated incident. I know it's part of this story, but he was a victim in a case. So from my perspective, this is all hearsay. And your honor, just to give you a little bit. There's parts in this statement where my client is saying, I didn't I didn't see anything. I don't know who did this. The investigators are sitting in the room saying, well, give us three names. Give us three names. And he's like, I didn't see it. Give us three names. So, I mean, that's the type of police work that quite honestly leads to in the three names that were eventually given. I think one of the three was the same people charged to the three. I don't believe we're ever charged. So it's like, you know, they were just like, give us three names. And then they had to look at photo lineups. And he didn't even when he was looking at the photo lineups, he didn't even say, oh, this is the person that did it. He's just like, yo, that's Shell Cal. That's so and so. So I don't even think it was a recantation, but I don't want any of my client's statements, the contents of which. And I understand the state has told me they don't plan on playing it, but I don't want them to ask about the contents of it. To be clear, your honor, because I think some things are getting conflated. In the first interview that Mr. Stilwell gave at the hospital, he said he didn't see anything. Second interview, he was asked to give names. He did not give any names. He didn't say anything. Again, he gave he gave no names in the second interview. It wasn't until November 2nd when Mr. Stilwell asked on his own to speak to the investigators. He told the investigators everything that happened. And then he provided names at that juncture. There was no pressure of just give me three names. None of that occurred in the third interview. The state believes that that is still a party opponent statement that he is still a party opponent in this case. 
This is a statement that he made to law enforcement regarding an incident that occurred to him as a victim. So, Your Honor, we still believe under the rules of evidence, it would come in as a party opponent statement. That is what we are operating under. It doesn't have to be inconsistent. It is his statement that he has previously given to law enforcement about something which he was a victim. So that is the evidentiary rule that we intend to introduce this statement under. And again, asking questions about the statement, not playing the statement. And then do you intend to do something about him allegedly later having said what I told you in November, I no longer stand by that now or whatever he might have said? The state intended to ask not this detective because this detective was unaware of the recanting. I don't know what you mean by this detective. The detective investigator Griffin, who was the lead detective on the homicide, he was unaware of it. However, investigator Dennis was aware that his client, that Mr. Stilwell recanted. And so it was my intention to ask about whether or not Mr. Stilwell took that statement back subsequently. I didn't intend to ask that question. Okay. And you're saying that this is all, I guess, a statement or an admission by a party opponent because you're offering it against Mr. Stilwell? And how is it against Mr. Stilwell? You're right. This, when Mr. Stilwell was shot at, this was all a part of this gang war that we had been discussing. This gang war that we had been discussing. Okay. I mean, do you have any evidence of that? The individuals who were charged are members of the opposition gang. And when did it occur? This occurred on September, the early morning hours of September 26, 2015. Has anybody been convicted? Yes. Okay. So members of an opposing gang were convicted of this shooting? Yes. One individual, I believe, pled earlier this year. Okay. Okay. And did Mr. Stilwell, when he gave the November statement, identify any of those people? He did. How many? He identified three, and I need to confirm, I know one person, Mr. Hardy, I believe is the one who took the plea earlier this year or last year. And are those three people the people that ended up charged? I know Mr. Hardy was one. I need to see if Mr. Hardy, Mr. Watts, and there's a third person. Mr. Watts, after further investigation, the case was dismissed against him. And then the second individual, I just need to confirm whether or not he was ultimately charged and the case was resolved. But out of the three people he identified, Mr. Hardy has taken a plea. The second individual, I think, is Mr. Ward. I have to confirm whether or not he took a plea. And then Mr. Watts was not. He later, after Mr. Sprinkle did further investigation, Mr. Watts was not charged with the homicide. Ultimately was not charged with the homicide. So he recanted. So he recanted. I'm sorry. When he recanted, what did he say? Let me pull up the letter. He said he was pressured and that everyone that he said did it didn't do it. He didn't know who did it. And the letter came after members of the opposition gang, I guess, received a discovery package. And in the lead detective's report, the lead detective said that Mr. Stilwell made identifications. And so they posted it all over social media. And so it was after that posting that Mr. Stilwell recanted. And also my understanding is there may have been some altercations while Mr. Stilwell was in the Fulton County Jail that also led to Mr. Stilwell recanting that statement. Okay. And two of the three people about whom he recanted ended up with their cases either dismissed or not pursued? One definitely was not pursued. I am trying to confirm the second individual. Just to give you a little context, Your Honor, this murder of Tiara Jones happened at about 1145 p.m. on a dark road. And a car sped up behind the car, behind the car, 
and started shooting. I don't know. I mean, this case would have been a defense attorney's dream to defend the 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 Tara Jones sad case, but it, I mean, because there would be no indication that Mr. Still would see it was have seen anything. It was after the police were saying, "Give us three names, give us three names, give us three names." Then he gives three names, and well, I, I mean, think except a whole month went by. I understand, but and then I think one or maybe two of them were charged, but I think it was only one of them. I think it was only Bobby Hardy. I believe it was only Bobby Hardy that was charged. So, um, I just I don't see the relevance. U ultimately, I mean, I have a lot of arguments, but ultimately, I don't see the relevance of any of this. My client. Um, being in the car, I see that is relevant, but I don't see the relevance of my client's statements to the police regarding this matter. It's relevant because he identified members of the opposition gang who did the crime, and so that is why it is relevant. I don't know if you can say that who did the crime part, since even y'all seem to have decided that some of them didn't in fact do the crime. He ID three men. So what's he relevant? ID'd three members of an opposite gang, and then he later said, no, I take that back. Right, and he did that after the op opposite gang posted on social media. So all of that, when we're talking about gang evidence and recanting and snitching, all of that is relevant for the jury when a young woman is murdered innocently as an innocent bystander, and a, there's more evidence than just a car pulling up on the side of a dark road. It starts at a gas station where Mr. Stilwell tells the police he sees some of these individuals at the gas station, there's surveillance video. So there's a number of other pieces to it to truncate it. We were solely going to talk about Mr. Stilwell, what he told the police that he saw and what he observed, and the fact that the individuals who he identified were members of the opposite gang, that there were individuals arrested, there will be subsequent evidence that will come in that, well, and I don't know if that part is relevant of who actually pled or not, but the fact of the matter is these people, it's who he identified that was the opposition gang. It, and that is relevant in this grand scheme of talking about the back and forth that was happening between January and ultimately October once most of these defendants that we've been discussing were arrested. In well, I, I think we need to be careful about who he's, what, when we say who Mr. Stilwell said did this as well. And, and I reviewed the transcripts last night. I've reviewed the videos several times. Um, but my understanding of what happened during, this, during the third interview where identifications were made was that Mr. Stilwell spoke about seeing Mr. Hardy in the parking lot outside JJ's Chicken. Um, he, he said he saw him there. Mm -hmm. And so they say, okay, we have some, I, and that makes sense to the detectives. Oh, Mr. Hardy, who they, they're calling him Smoke, I think, is at JJ's Chicken right before the, the car gets shot up. That makes sense to them. So they say, we have some photo identity, we have some lineups we'd like to show you. And they read him the lineup admonition and they show it to him and he's like, that's Hardy, I think he calls him Smoke, and he identifies Shell Kell and Merle, I think is the other guy. Those other two individuals, to my recollection, and from the transcript that I read, he never says they did These anything. These are the people that shot me, he just says. This says, I identify. This is this person, this is right. this person. What do you say to that? In the context of him telling the story of what happened, so that's something that they get cross about. I need to look at the interview and the letters. No, the state did not intend, Your Honor, the state intended to ask Investigator Griffin, did you meet with him twice? Did he give you any information at those two times? Did he eventually meet with you again? Did he provide more information about it? Did he eventually, did he eventually tell you who he thought was involved? Did he make identifications? Who did he make identifications to? After that, did you Okay, mark? but did he make identifications of, I know this person and this person, versus identifications of, these are the three people that shot me? That's the, two different things. The context of the interview is... He, so I need to look at it then. What about the turn this into a whole other trial within right. a trial? It, we don't... 
Your Honor, literally, the state was going to have investigate, investigate Griffin on the stand, ideally for about 20 minutes, if that. So that's not turning in a, it's a 25 minute interview, Your Honor. If you, I believe Investigator Griffin won't come until tomorrow morning. So we can send the interview over to the court. You can review it. It's a 25 minute interview for the court to, to it, interview. But that's not the state. To the portion that you maintain is I, him saying, these are the three people that did it. And I, then send me the letter that is the alleged recantation. I, I can send you the recantation, but I and think the court- And do it quickly, because honestly, I don't want to spend the entirety of my evenings doing this case. I don't think that the court can only look at the specific portion, because I think you need to see the entire video to understand how the identification came about. I don't think that the specific five minutes before or five minutes after will give the court that context that I think he will need once, when he does the identification. So that is the only reason why I'm suggesting that you watch the entirety of it, so you can understand the context surrounding the identification. Okay, send it to me now so that our next break, I can start watching it. I'll show you. Along with the letter, both of them. I will send you both. And Your Honor, I know they said Investigator Griffin's not coming tomorrow. If we need to wait till tomorrow on this, there's one picture that was shared in the Dropbox. And just to remind the court, these were things that were never brought up to discuss the issues with previously. This is as to this same crime or incident? Yes, but we never litigated it. Somebody send me the picture. And there's a picture of essentially a young lady, Ms. Jones, and it's horrible. And she's- After she's been shot. Bleeding from the face. She's halfway through a windshield and her body appears to be burned. She's unrecognizable. Okay. And the objection would be? 403, prejudicial. I know that my client is not accused of doing this to Ms. Jones, but ultimately the state is holding him responsible. But for him being in the car, this wouldn't have happened to her. Your Honor, the state did not intend to publish that picture. The state did intend to introduce it because of course that is what happened. So the state did not intend to publish it. The state did intend to introduce it, but I will send the court the picture so you can see all of the pictures that the state intended to- If it's introduced, then it would be going back with the jury. Yes, the jurors will see it at some later time, but I didn't intend to publish it. Let me see the picture. Somebody send it to me now. Is there some other way to get in evidence that this woman was killed in the car crash that followed the shooting? That's what happened, right? It's already in evidence, Your Honor. That fact, right? Yes, Detective Dennis testified to that. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm going to sustain that objection to that picture. Unnecessarily gruesome. So do you want to send it or no? No, don't worry about it. Your Honor. All right, so that takes care of the picture. Yes. What I don't, what I'm not appreciating is Mr. Williams has a right to then confront and cross-examine Mr. Shannon Jackson because this is confrontation clause. It is the police, it's a victim, from what I understand, identifying people in a criminal case. That's testimonial. And what's the state's response to that? I mean, I guess if you are only having it elicited that he made a statement where he identified, how far is it going to get? Your Honor, the state's intentions, was Mr. Stilwell the victim in a crime? Did you speak to him? Was he able to tell you who he believed to be involved in the incident? Who were those individuals? That, what occurred? I was going to ask him, what did he tell you happened? They were in the car, it flipped over. All right, and so then what do you say about the confrontation clause issue? Your Honor, there's... That's clearly testimonial. And it's hearsay. And it might be an admission by a party opponent. But that would be only as to him, really. And we could do a limited instruction as to him. I mean, he's the victim in the case, so we have to... 
it's not a crime, it's not a part of the good spirit. He's the victim of a case. If it only has to be used against him to say that he was the victim, then we can have a limited instruction that... Well, but you're not just using it to show that he was the victim. We are showing that it was a part of the gang war, but that he was the victim in this case. Earlier, a few weeks ago, we brought in the other shooting that involved Mr. Um, Mr. Stilwell, where he was shot a few weeks prior to this at Glenshaw. And, and did any of his statements come in at that point? No. All right, well then, that's not really the comparable. You mind if I can just have a moment to research that particular issue to All see right. um, to see if he can come in some other way. And just for completeness, I also include in the confrontation clause the quote recantation. Yeah, I mean that, which frankly is more than to just show he was a victim. Because once you get into the, oh, and then something got posted on social media, and oh, then he went back and said something different, you know, that further complicates things. Uh, by the way, um, it appears that Carter, Hardy, and Ward all pled to some charges in that case. Those were not the people no. that he named. No. Okay. He named Hardy. I, I'm not sure about Ward because it was a nickname, but he definitely, he named three people and one of them was Shell Kel, who's Kelvin Walker. Well, okay. He named Hardy and Merrill, who was Ward. The only person he did not name was Carter. And he named Watts. And like I said, at the further investigation, Watts. I believe arrest warrants were taken off for Watts. That's what I need to confirm. But after the state did for after the DA's office did further investigation, we um, did not indict Watts. We we indicted Mr. Um, Dominic Carter, also known as Steve. And y'all are saying that the only one that he said he thought had anything to do with this was um, Hardy. Not you, not you, the state, you, the defense. Sorry. I understand the statement. He is saying that he saw Hardy talking to his girlfriend in the in the parking lot of JJ's Chicken uh -huh. shortly before they left. So he never says that he thinks anybody did this shooting. He well, just says, here are the circumstances leading up to it. That's my understanding. Uh, he... he and it would defy logic for him to have seen who the shooters were. It was a car sped up behind and started shooting in the windshield. And then his car, the car right. he was well, in. Well, I mean, he could have said he was at the Jagdish Chicken in a blue Buick. And then I saw a blue Buick drive up again, you know. But I don't know if that's what happened or he not. Said, he said the car was, he thought it was a newer model car because of the style of lights, is my recollection of what he said. And does he tie a car he saw at the JJ so. with a? I don't yeah. believe so. Okay. I think we have different understandings of the video, Your Honor. I just think he, if once we do the research on the confrontation clause issue, then I believe we also we're sending over the interview to the court, or it's already been sent. Okay. All three were sent. It is just the third video. It's both audio and video recorded using evidence reviewer. Okay. And then the um, the letter also needs to get sent. And this is a letter that y'all never got until yesterday. No letter I never received till yesterday. And and. Okay, so it seems problematic even if you don't introduce the letter to introduce essentially the contents of the letter. My team is double checking something for me in Supplemental Discovery 11. I'm confirming whether or not this was the entire case file. So if you can give me one moment, I believe I'm trying to confirm this is the entire case file. Mm. Okay, well, are we in two minutes ready for the jury got your next witness lined up 
um, Mr. Matthews on a scheduling matter. Actually, two scheduling matters. Um, Alright, y'all y'all wanna get your next witness in? Yes. Great. Are we ready for the jury? Yes, okay. Yes, yes, okay. We did all of the...
we were afraid to tell everybody. All right. Thank you. Who's going to be the panel on this witness? Mr. Brown? Yes. All right. Oh, can you swear the witness? Thank you. Rodney Sturkey. Good afternoon, Mr. Sturkey. Where are you from? Atlanta. And um, where do you currently live? In Clayton County. And have you always lived there? No. Um, where did you live on January 13th, 2018? I was standing up on Old Hickory Road. By then. Do you recall residing at the address of 3424 Ruby Harbor Boulevard in Atlanta? Yes. Uh, and how did you come to end up res residing there? A friend of mine. Okay. Who's your friend? Bush. Do you have a first name? I don't know his first name. Okay. Um, is that Bush a male or female? It's a male. Um, how do you know Mr. Blue? My mechanic. Okay. He's a mechanic? Yes. Oh, okay. And um, how long have you known him? Years. Years? Um, do you know him to be, uh, in your knowledge, do you know him to be related to any defendants in this room? No. When did you move to 3424 Ruby Harbor Boulevard, Southeast? I can't recall the date. Um, were you allowed to move in rent-free? No. Okay. Um, how much was your rent? Um, Sustained. Can you use a mic, please? Thanks. All right. <clears throat> and um, how long did you reside at that address? About three days. Was it a... Um, did you rent the whole house or did you have just a room? Just a room. Okay. And Mr. Sturkey, what caused you to move? I was moving either way to go. Um, I was moving back to Jonesboro. Okay. Do you recall um, that address of 3424 Ruby Harper Bully, uh, Boulevard um, being shot up on uh, January 13, 2015? Yes. Okay. Um, would you please tell the jury what you remember about that incident, if you will? Only thing I know, my van got hit twice. Twice. That, that was it. Okay. And um, do you know if the actual home or uh, actually the structure of the home was hit from your recollection? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> were you hit by any bullets or gunfire? No. Okay. Were you actually even present at the time that the incident occurred? I wasn't there. Where were you at? I was at work. Okay. And what was your shift during that time? Relevance, objection. Sustained. What time did you uh, learn that the house was shot up? Well, one or two. Okay. And um, when you returned um, to the house that uh, at 3424 Ruby Harper Boulevard, uh, what, if anything, did you see that morning? That night morning? Well, yes. A police. Okay. Did you see any, like, yellow tape or anything like that? No. Okay. Uh, was it a lot or a few police? True. Okay. Uh, were you able to access the area where you were staying at that time? No. Okay. Why weren't you able to access it? I don't know. Okay. Were you stopped by anybody? Yes, the police. Okay. Um, and uh, at which time did you come to learn that it was your house that you were staying at during that stop? Uh, what, at what time did you come to learn that it was your home? Around 1.30 in okay. the morning. Uh, poor question. Let me ask a better question. Um, during your, when you arrived back at the home from work, um, at what, were you able to freely go into the home? No. Okay. Um, during which point did you learn at that time when you arrived at the house uh I'll strike that question. I'll move on. Other than your van, was any other property that you own uh, affected by the gunfire? No. Okay. 
And uh, what type of vehicle did you own in terms of van? It's a white van. Okay. Um, how long had you had it? About three years. Do you still have it? No. Um, were you able to move it that evening after you had learned that it was affected by the gunfire? I moved it the next morning. Okay. Did you? Uh, how long did you continue to reside at that home after that occurred? After the incident of the shooting incident occurred. I left the following day. Okay. Um, my apologies. <clears throat> and. Did you get, when did you move, uh, did you move your van that same v, uh, same night or did you move it the next day as well? Yes, an answer. Sustained. All right. Was your van still drivable after the bullets had impacted it? Objection. Yes. Yes, an answer. Sustained. Your Honor, that question wasn't asked. Please. And do you know any of the person? Or it, 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 do you know or have any idea who may have shot up your home uh, on that day? No. And have you ever had anything like that happen at any place? Uh, at that place that you were staying? Excuse me. Don't answer that. And when you, after you moved, uh, did you have any further involvement with this particular matter or incident um, as it relates to the 3424 Ruby Harbor Boulevard address nope. shooting? No further questions. Any questions for this witness by the defense? Thank you, no questions. No, Your Honor. All right, thank you for your time. You are excused. Call your next witness. So that's it, right? That's it. Okay, they're gonna stop all the bricks, right? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock my job. Then they came to my job, threatened to lock me up. Well, so. I am very sorry to hear that. Yeah. But you are right. free to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Call your next witness. Okay. Nelson, okay. Name is William Nelson, W I L L I A M N E L S O N. Good afternoon, Mr. Nelson. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, where do you work? I currently work for Sandy Springs Police Department. And how long have you worked for uh, Sandy Springs Chief? A little over four years. Back in 20, February 2015, where did you work? I worked for the City of Atlanta Police Department. I worked Zone 3 Morning Watch. Right, so what were those hours? Uh, overnight. Uh, I believe I got in at 8 p.m. until uh, early morning. How long were you with uh, APD's morning watch? Uh, I was with them for a little over two years. Now, based on your work with uh, eight, uh, sorry, Zone 3 uh, morning watch, are you familiar with the uh, area of Madonna Street where it intersects with uh, University Avenue? Yes, sir. Now, I want to turn your attention to February 10th, 2015. Did you respond to the Brady Hospital? Yes, sir. Why did you respond? I responded to a person shot call. On your arrival, what did you observe? Uh, when I got on scene, I observed a silver Dodge Charger part. Uh, it had visible damage to the door and windows, and then there was blood inside the vehicle. Did you do a, did you do a walk around? Yes, sir. And tell the jury what you did next. Uh, after seeing the damage and the blood, I went inside to the hospital um, where I met with medical staff who pointed me in the right direction to find the victim. Did you speak with the victim? I did. Who was the victim? Kelvin Watts. Without telling me what he said, did you speak with Mr. Isaac? Did Mr. Watts tell you what happened? Yes, sir. Now, while speaking with Mr. Watts, um, what did you observe about his physical? 
Uh, I noticed a laceration to the left side of his head, blood dripping down. Uh, he had what appeared to be a gunshot wound to his left arm, and he had another laceration on his left wrist. Now, during the course of your investigation, did you become aware of the location of where Mr. Watts was shot? Yes, sir. And where was that location? McDaniel Street, University Avenue. Do you know how Mr. Watts got to Brady Hospital? He drove himself. Sustained. So what did you do after you finished speaking with Mr. Watts? After speaking, we, I went back downstairs outside to the vehicle, and uh, we conducted a search, um, search of the vehicle. Did the search, what did the search you? Uh, we did not locate any shell casings or any weapons in the vehicle. Sergeant Nelson, did you prepare a report in this case? Uh, yes, I did, sir, and uh, just made a clerical error in my narrative. I put the wrong date. What date did you put in your narrative? Uh, January 2nd, 2015, and the correct date was February 10th, 2015. So the incident date is? February 10th, 2015. Sergeant Nelson, did you make any arrests in this case? Yes, sir. Uh, I arrested Mr. Watts. He had a uh, warrant for his arrest for probation violation. Yes, sir. Any questions for this witness? All right, thank you for your time. You are excused by your next witness. Thank you. I really would appreciate if you had these people ready to walk in when the other witness walks out. I mean, it's usually not that big of a deal, but any bit of time that we can save in this trial would be helpful to everybody. Thank you. I mean, you got plenty of people working on this case who could be there ready at the door. First name Alice, A L I C E, last name Flemister, F as in Frank, L E M I S T E R. Good afternoon, Ms. Flemister. Good afternoon. Are you employed? I'm retired. Okay, and where did you retire from? City of Atlanta Police Department. And how long did you work for the City of Atlanta Police Department? 26 years. And what did you do in your employment for the City of Atlanta Police Department? Crime scene supervisor. And um, were you always a supervisor? No. Okay. When did you get your promotion to supervisor? I got my promotion to supervisor in 1998. And um, what is your time with the uh, Atlanta Police Department now? In 2019, July of 2019. All right. <clears throat> and uh, do you recall working on uh, Tuesday, July, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, January 13th, 2015? Yes. All right. And uh, do you recall being dispatched to an address uh, by 3424 Ruby Harper Boulevard? Yes. Okay. And what county is that address situated? What county? Yes, ma'am. Fulton. And um, do you know what is located at that address? A house? A commercial building? A house. Okay. Um, and... Um, what do you remember about responding to that call? What do I remember about yes. responding to the call? 
I received a call for a shots fired. And um, when you got, do you recall what, if anything, you observed when you got to the location? Um, I observed the house. Um, upon speaking with the officers, um, I noticed there was some um, casings and some damages. Okay. Um, after you um, do, uh, after you did that, um, made those initial observations, that is, um, did you process the crime scene? Yes. And uh, what goes went into your processing of that crime scene? What goes into the processing of the crime scene is that once I do my observation, I would then start to take the photographs of the scene. And once I photograph the scene, I process, I take photo, once I process the scene, which includes taking photographs of the scene, photographs of the evidence, if there's any evidence that needs, that is to be collected, I would then take photographs of the evidence. If there's any damages, I would take photographs of that. Once I finish, once I finish that, then I would mark the evidence and collect the evidence. Do you also prepare a crime scene record? Yes. All right. Um, I am now approached well, with the court's permission approach to approach State Specific 1DDDB, which has already been provided to defense and discovery. And uh, Ms. Flemingster, I have put before you uh, what has been already identified as States 1DDDB. Um, what has been placed before you? My crime scene report. Okay. Um, does that crime scene report um, in front of you pertain to the <coughs> uh, that you responded to at 3424 Ruby Harper Boulevard on January 13, uh, 2015? Correct. And um, uh, has that, uh, does that uh, report, well, is it the same or substantially the same as it was when you authored it uh, at that time? Yes. All right. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the state now moves to admit into evidence states exhibit one Delta, 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 Bravo. Bravo. All right, it's admitted without objection. <clears throat> Mrs. Flemister, um, do you have crime scene, uh, are there crime scene photos uh, for this particular incident? Are there crime scene photos yes. for the incident that I took? Yes. Are they here? No. That, did you take them? I did take them. Have they been ever been located? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, but you did take some. I did take photographs. And the photos that you took, uh, are, are those uh, photos or their descriptions notated within that report? Yes. Okay. Um, utilizing the report that is before you, uh, Mrs. Flemister, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I uh, would like to ask you a few questions. Uh, based on that report, how many photographs did you take when you responded to uh, the incident location. 107. And um, do you, within that um, uh, crime scene record, note all of the descriptions of uh, the angles and uh, perspectives of those photos? Yes. And um, do you also note within the report or record before you uh, any other such activity that you performed or did uh, when you responded to that crime scene? Yes. Was there any uh, projectiles recovered, <clears throat> excuse me, from the crime scene? May I refer to my report? Yes. One projectile. Okay. And um, in your, do you also note within that same report um, who the um, incident or uh, responding officer uh, uh, is uh, that went to this incident, right? Yes. Who was the responding officer? Collins. Just a few more questions. Um, Mrs. Flemister, as it relates to this particular location, um, what, turning to what is the third page of your report, Do you know any vehicles that were affected by defects or involved in this particular incident? There was two vehicles. Okay. Do you list them? Yes. What were they? It was a 95 Ford 
This is EC2. <coughs> the model and an 83 Chevy. Chevrolet. All right. Um, I want to turn your attention to the next two pages over in your report. And I want to uh, note and direct your attention to what would be, uh, I guess, item number 29. Do you see the description for that photo? Overall showing the van and car. Okay. I also would like to uh, direct your attention um, just a page back, uh, well, to the actually to the second page of your crime scene record. Um, and on that page, do you list um, a name of, uh, of any person related to this particular incident as a victim or homeowner? Yes. What is the name that is listed there? Thaddeus Bush. And how do you spell Bush? B as in boy, U as in umbrella, S as in Sam, C as in Charlie, H as in hat. Mrs. Flannister, how many shell casings did you recover from this particular crime scene incident? How many did I recover? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um... Twenty-five. And how many projectiles? One projectile. And after you collected these items uh, and took them into evidence, uh, what did you uh, did you perform any kind of testing on? Once I collected the um, evidence, the testing that I did on the casing on the evidence was latent print processing. And the latent, print, uh, the latent print processing that you conducted on these items, uh, what uh, was the result, if any, uh, of that testing? There were no prints of value lifted from the items. Is it typical uh, in your training and experience for that to be the result when it comes to showcasing your project items? Yes. Do you know why? It's just rarely that you would get prints off those. And after you collected those uh, shell casings and that single projectile, um, is it in your normal routine to turn them over elsewhere or do you keep them? It is our, our process is once we, once we process the evidence, we then turn it over to the APD crime lab. Another day, um, and that is uh, January the 14th, 2015. Okay. Uh, do you recall working that day, Mrs. Williams? Yes. And uh, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you recall about that day? Well, that was a rainy morning. It was a rainy morning, and I received a call to go out to um, a shots fired call. Excuse me. What was the address uh, that you responded to on January 14, 2015? 2738 Fair Lane Drive, Southeast. Okay. Um, and do you, in what county do you know that address to be located? Fulton County. All right. And um, upon your arrival, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury uh, what, if anything, you remember about uh, when you what you saw at that time? What I saw... Once I arrived, first of all, there was a lot of um, casings in the street. There was a car in the driveway, and it was a house. 
And <clears throat> I'm now going to um, show you what has already been provided in Discovery and uh, is labeled as states exhibits 1, D, 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 F through 57, D, 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 F. And <clears throat> to put those before you, I want to ask you a question. Mrs. Flemister, have you had a chance prior to coming to court today to review those states' exhibits that have been identified just moments ago? Yes. And um, what do you know those exhibits to be uh, that were just placed in front of you that you reviewed prior to coming to court today? It will show the location of the house. Also, also it will show what I reviewed is the overall of the house, showing the car in the driveway, showing the shell casings that are in the street. Um, it will also show damages to the house. Okay. Um, is it fair to say that those exhibits that were just identified by myself a few minutes ago are crime scene photographs that you took? Yes. All right. And are those crime scene photographs that are in front of you, uh, do they fairly accurately depict the crime scene as you remember it to be of the 2738 Fair Lane Boulevard, I mean Fair Lane um, a Drive, Southeast address that you responded to on January 14, 2015? Yes. All right. Um, Your Honor, at this time, the state now moves to admit uh, the uh, exhibits that have previously been identified and request permission just for select few uh, to publish. All right, they are admitted. Right. Prior to publishing, I want to present you with uh, another state's exhibit. I'll, additionally, Your Honor, which has already been provided in discovery with your permission, I will approach you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it is uh, identified as state's exhibit 58, Delta, 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 Franco. And um, I want to ask you, Mrs. Flemister, have you had a chance to review that state's exhibit prior to coming to court today? Yes. And um, what is that state's exhibit? This is my crime scene report. And does it contain anything different than what is, does it contain a little bit more or less than what is identified in your crime scene photos in terms of information? Everything is identical. Okay. Um, and does it fairly, well, is it in the same or substantially the same condition as it was uh, when you initially uh, authored it? Repeat. Is it in the same, starting with that which is on the screen? Mrs. Flemister, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury uh, what we are seeing here in State's Exhibit 1 Delta Delta uh, F? What you're seeing in the photograph is the mailbox showing the address, the numeric address of the crime scene. Okay. Um, turning to the next State's Exhibit. And um, if we can zoom in. On the last uh, exhibit, the address was a little obscure. Can you see it completely here on this, the address number? What, what do you like to see those numbers? 2738. And in this exhibit, do uh, you see any damage to the front of this uh, residence? Yes. Where do you see it? I see damage to the front door. And um, next state's exhibit, please. All right, now showing you 44. Oh, we can go past that. All right, now showing you two Delta, 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 Franco. Uh, Mrs. Flemister, um, is this an overall view of the uh, residence that you responded to? Yes. And uh, does it capture one of the vehicles that you uh, saw there that was affected by the uh, gunshots on that uh, day? Yes. All right, uh, next exhibit. Oh, we can go to the next exhibit. State's exhibit four, Delta, 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 Franco. Um, Mrs. Flemister, do you see any defects in the vehicle uh, that is featured in this exhibit? In the way, um, which, okay, and, and is it where the cursor is moving? It's just in there. The defect is right here. Okay, and when you say here, are you speaking on the window, windshield? In the windshield to the right. Okay. Right. All right. Come, Come over. Right Come over. Come over. Come over. Right here. Okay. All right. Do um, you see any others on this uh, windshield? The cracks. 
Can I? Yes. Yes. Okay. And where do you see me? To my left. Come over. Right. right here. All right. And is there one? Do you see anything in the top right hand corner of that same windshield? Hmm. Yes. Okay. No yes. Okay. Next thing to exhibit, please. Showing you states five Delta, 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 Franklin. Do you see any, uh, is, is there, is that a defect or is that something else on that windshield? That is basically a close up okay. of the defects in the windshield. All right. Is it, fair, is it fair to say that there are several other such uh, defects in this vehicle that you would have captured with your crime scene photos on that day? Yes. Okay. Um, now turning your attention to the next state's exhibit. Next one. one more. All right. Are there other uh, defects in this vehicle that you observe? Yes. And uh, where do you see the this is what see. the defects? Is on the driver's side. No, I'm sorry. Passenger side front. Okay. Um, passenger side front fender, and then um, there's defects. On the passenger side right door, there's a defect in the um, window, and then there's a defect in the right rear. Okay. Next please. Um, is this just more of the same that you would have noted in the report related to this vehicle? Correct. Next please. Um, uh, can you read off the license plate number associated? The license plate number is C as in cat, A as in apple, Y2834. And for the record, that is state's exhibit 14DDDF. Uh, next state's exhibit, please. All right, next one. Next one. All right. Um, is this, uh, uh, what is this photograph of, Mrs. Kings? It's showing a um, shell casing on the ground. Would you have captured all of the shell casing that you noted, um, uh, that you observed rather, uh, in similar fashion with other photographs of this type? Yes. Uh, and for the record, this is State's Exhibit 20 DDDF. Next State's Exhibit, please. All right. Um, is it in your in your course of uh, work when you were employed that you normally put down placards? Yes. Is this such a representation of what you did? on the date of the incident that you responded to? Yes. Okay. Next exhibit, please. <clears throat> and um, next exhibit. Um, when it came to the home, um, did you find several defects to the home? Yes. And did you find defects inside the home? Yes. And uh, in state's exhibit 45 BEDL, um, are we looking at a defect in the window panel or uh, awning next to it? Yes. All right. Next day's exhibit. All right. Next exhibit. Next exhibit. Next exhibit. Is it fair to say that there were several defects in the outside exterior portions of the home? Correct. All right. Now show me state's exhibit 49 DDDF. Oh, is this a, is, what are we looking at here? What portion of the home is this, Mrs. Cross? This is an overall of the living room. And is this another such uh, defect that you found only inside the home in this exhibit? This is a defect in the kitchen frame. Okay. And that is in uh, state's exhibit 50 DDDF. Next state's exhibit, please. <coughs> this is exhibit 56 DDDF is showing. Um, do you see any defects in this portion of the home? And if we can zoom in on the furthest left panel of that door.
if y'all mind me looking through. Incident report for Ruby Harper. Yes, sir. Is one five zero one three zero one two three. And as to your testimony, as to that incident, does that conclude your involvement with that particular incident? Correct. All right. What is the incident number associated for the uh, shooting that occurred at the uh, twenty uh, seven thirty eight Fair Lane Drive, Southeast Atlanta address? What is the incident? APD incident. One five zero. One four zero three nine one. So as to your testimony regarding that incident, does that summarize or complete your involvement with that case? Correct. All right, Your Honor, stay as no further questions for this witness. All right, thank you. Does the defense have any questions for this witness? On behalf of Mr. Williams. Yeah. On behalf of Mr. Williams. All right. Um, thank you for your time and you are excused while your next witness. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, and do you recall being called out to uh, an address of 88 the Nero um, Avenue, Southeast Atlanta, Georgia? It's possible. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to approach you. in discovery already and I um, they are identified as so states exhibit one delta delta kilo through is that three D's and then a K? Yes ma'am. Okay. Through 138 of the same 
sendiri. I'm gonna start with those first, and then transition to the second set. With respect to those that are being put before you uh, just now, um, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury uh, if uh, you've had a chance to review those state exhibits prior to coming to the court today? <clears throat> yes, I just reviewed them. Yes, and um, in reviewing them, are those uh, exhibits that you recognize as your own work? Yes. Okay. And um, are those exhibits that have been identified just a few moments ago, uh, do they fairly and accurately depict uh, the crime scene of 88 Venera Avenue as it was when you responded to it on January 11, 2015? If they have you reviewed them, so good. Let's see, 88. I guess 88 is the address that you're referring to, yes, but I don't see the... Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Um, I'm going to direct your attention to State's Exhibit 2, DDDK. Is that what you're referencing? Or yes. Okay. Um, and do those State's Exhibits that you just flipped through briefly uh, and that have been identified fairly and accurately depict the crime scene as it was when you responded to it on that day? Yes. State now moves to admit those exhibits into evidence. All right, those are admitted. I am now going to show you uh, a second set, um, continuing um, in that same phonetic grouping, Your Honor. Um, they are 140 DDDK through 247 DDDK. And that uh, sometimes when you are taking photographs, you have to put them on separate uh, storage devices because there's so many of them? Yes. Okay. And is it fair to say that this is a second set of the same that were on a separate storage device? Yes. Okay. And do those pictures uh, fairly and accurately depict the crime scene of 88 Venera Avenue as it was when you responded? Yes. Um, you're not you're on the state now moves to admit uh, the exhibits that have been just identified in the evidence and request permission to publish a uh, select few of those as well. All right, um, admitted and you may. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Um, when I <clears throat> responded to 88 Venera, from what I can see through my pictures, I saw a residence that was basically shot up, and defects and projectiles and damages throughout the residence. Okay. And um, did you capture with your uh, time that you spent at that crime scene, all the defects that you observed uh, in your photo roll? Yes. Okay. Um, did you collect any evidence from that crime scene at 88 New York Avenue? Yes. And uh, do you know what evidence you collected? Yes. Okay. What evidence did you collect? Um, projectiles and cartridge casings. Okay. Do you know how many? Or... I will have to refer to my report. I will now show you what has already been provided in discovery to the defense and uh, previously shown to you uh, and identified as State's Exhibit 139-DDDK. Um, and I will put that before you. And when you remember to refresh, please look up at me and we'll continue to ask some questions. How many did you collect? My 
crime report. I collected 53 shell cases. Okay. And um, did you collect any projectiles? I collected two projectiles. Okay. And did you do any type of testing or analysis on the items that were collected? I processed um, projectiles and cartridge casings for latent fingerprints. None were located and then um, submitted it into the crime lab for further processing. Showing you briefly um, just a few uh, select exhibits um, that have just been admitted from um, the phonetic grouping that was identified um, previously as 1 DDDK through 247 DDDK, uh, starting with States Exhibit 1 uh, DDDK. While we're waiting, Ms. Uh, Robertson, um, when you uh, collected those shell casings, um, did you, excuse me, when you photographed the shell casings, um, did you photograph them with, at the direction of anyone else or did you do that alone? I photographed at the direction of the investigators. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> now showing you what's been previously identified as states 3 DDK. Um, as this is the home to which you responded on the day in question of January 11, 2015? Yes. Um, that's the thing to do. Is that the uh, address or mailbox uh, associated with that address? Yes. Okay. Next exhibit. Showing you states 249 DDDK and uh, Ms. Robertson, can you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, is this an overview of the placards that you would normally put out? Yes. Yes. And um, is it fair to say that you would have also done the same for many other numbers associated with this particular shooting? Yes. All right. And are those placards um, nearby shell casings or projectiles that were eventually collected by yourself that evening? Cartridge cases, yes. Okay. Uh, next stage is in this photo, which is states exhibit D D D K, um, is it? Are we looking at an overview of the living living room? Yes. Do you see any defects inside the home uh, at all in this picture? Yes. Where do you see them? On the walls and semi ceiling. Okay. And is the cursor going where there are defects that you are identifying with your eye? This yes. And in total, from this view, can you count out how many you see? Uh, to my naked eye, one, two, three, four. Four? Okay. Next stage exhibit, please. Showing you stage exhibit eight. We're going to go to the next one, please. All right. Here, do you see also any such defects in the home? Yes. And where do you see those at in this exhibit, which is 9 D D D K? The wall and the couch. <coughs> Next stage exhibit, please. Next. Next one. Next one. And one more. All right. Um, in this view, uh, are we now in the bedroom of one of the rooms in the home? Yes. And uh, are, what is this hole or uh, defect in the wall? Defect. Okay. Others like this photograph pertinent to this room in your photo book? Um, it's possible pertinent to this room, but it's in several rooms. Next case is it, please. All right, next one. Next one. And one more. Okay. Um, is this uh, the same room or is it facing a different uh, hallway? Facing a different hallway. All right, uh, that is States Exhibit 32 DDDK. Next is States Exhibit, please. Okay. Next. Um, is this
this another view of the living room of uh, well, different uh, portion of the home? Yes, this is this is the entrance. And then to finish that, that's 36 DBEK. Um, now showing uh, the next day's exhibit. Do you see any defects in 37 DBEK? Yes. Okay, uh, where do you see it? Closer to the ceiling. Yes. Okay. Now transitioning your attention to the date of <clears throat> well, I want to transition your attention to uh, associate what? Is there a police uh, APD uh, police number or incident number associated with this incident? Yes. What is that police or incident number? Incident number is one five zero one one zero one zero three. And as it relates to that incident the, uh, that you just described with that incident number, did that conclude your involvement with that particular incident? It is possible. It could be more. Okay. Um, in the main, with everything that you've done, again, be identified in those photos? Yes. Now transition your attention to the date of January the 12th, 2015. Have you, and I'm going to approach you, of course, continue with your mission, if that is, yeah. you have these exhibits that have been provided in discovery that are identified like so, 1DDD Lima, to 14 DDD Lima. And if I remove this. And, <clears throat> excuse me, have you had an opportunity uh, to review these states' exhibits that have been previously identified prior to coming to court today? Yes. And, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Robertson, um, what do you understand or recognize these to be, if any? Crime scene. Okay. Are these uh, uh, crime scene photos that you took yourself? Yes. Okay. And do they appear to be in the same or substantially same condition? Or, excuse me, or do they fairly and accurately depict the crime scene uh, that he responded to uh, at 193 Hendricks Avenue, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia, on January the 12th, 2015. Yes. Okay. Um, at this time, Your Honor, the state now moves to admit these state's exhibits and permission to publish just to select three. They're admitted. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> um, now, uh, directing your attention to the screen, and it should populate briefly. And while we're waiting on that, um, I'll ask what was the uh, nature of the call to which you responded at this address on this day? I don't have my report, but I'm guessing it's an assault. Okay, well, uh, instead of guessing, um, would see your report refresh your recollection? Yes. Approaching with states 15 DDD Lima. 
And um, it is now in front of you. And when your memory has been so refreshed, please look back up at me and I'll finish with the question. An assault case. Okay. And um, do uh, you want you uh, do you recall um, who it is that um, was the responding officer uh, to this incident? Officer Moss. And um, and what what county is that address that you responded to located? Fulton County. And when you uh, arrived to this location, did you collect any evidence? Yes. Okay. Um, what evidence did you collect? I collected 11 cartridge cases. And um, did you process those or perform any analysis with those? I processed... Hang on. No, I did not process these. Officer Moss took possession of these cartridge cases. Did you uh, at least photograph or take uh, are those cartridge casings that you recovered uh, captured within your photographs that have just been admitted? Yes. Okay. Um, now showing and uh, directing your attention to what is showing on the uh, monitor before you as stage one D D D Lima. Um, is this the address located at the? Is this the resident located at the address that was just previously identified? Yes. And um, now showing uh, you the next stage is here. Uh, it is 2 DDG Lima, um, and this address is pertinent to it's also listed in your report. Yes. Okay. Uh, next state's exhibit. Next state's exhibit. And uh, do you see any defects to this door? Featured in states 4 DDG L? Defects is the glass damage. Um, and uh, next state's exhibit. Is, uh, where are you positioned when you took this state's uh, picture that is identified as states 5 DDDL? I'm standing on the inside facing the same entrance right. from, from the inside. Okay. And as to this photo, uh, do you see uh, any defects in state 6 DDDL? Uh, let's see, see debris. I see more debris. And when you say debris, do you see what, what kind of debris? Glass damage. Next stage is it? A D E D L. Uh, what about here? Do you see any defect to the TV? Yes, there's a defect to the TV. And would you have, uh, as with the other photos that we just previously discussed, would you have grouped or uh, taken photos similar in nature to any such defects contained within the residence? Uh, that she responded to at 193 Hendricks Avenue. Yes. All right. Uh, finally, last state's exhibit, uh, next one. Uh, state's exhibit 9 D E D L. Uh, is this one such vehicle that you observed of interest at that location? Yes. And why? It was directed at the um, primary officers, but also it has defects. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, next state's exhibit. And as it stands for this uh, vehicle, um, as with the prior exhibits uh, featured inside the home, would you have taken pictures of all such uh, defects of interest to you at that time related to this car? Yes. Okay. Next day's exhibit. Next one. And um, why would you take uh, state's exhibit two, uh, excuse me, 12 DDDL? This was the incident. Um, incident across the street from the house, I believe, or on the side of the home. Next exhibit. Is, does this look like a, 
What does this look like? What does this look like to you? It looks like a pathway. My markers. And would you have placed, why would you have placed these on the ground? To mark my evidence. Okay. And what evidence do you see featured here in states uh, 14 DDDL? The cartridge cases. Okay, and um, uh, is that uh, contained, uh, would you have con taken pictures of any other such cartridge cases located at the scene of the crime? Yes. Okay. Um, now, um, we can take that down next. I want to direct your attention before doing so. Um, what is the incident number associated with that particular uh, address at 193 Hendricks Avenue? 15012 And did that conclude your involvement as to that police incident number? Yes. Finally, I want to turn your attention to state's exhibits. Well, turn your attention to the date of. Well, to the address of and location of 114 Maury Avenue Southeast uh, and 156 Maury Avenue Southeast at Nancy, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> do you recall being dispatched to that address on um, February 29th, uh, excuse me, February 19th, 2015? No. Okay. And... I want to approach you with uh, what already has been provided in discovery as states exhibits uh, 13 D, 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 D through 42 D, 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 D. And uh, I'm going to put these before you and I'm going to just slide some of this aside. Okay. <clears throat> and do you recognize these state's exhibits that have been placed before you? Yes. And how do you recognize them? Picture I took. Okay. And do those uh, pictures that are in front of you pertain to uh, the um, address of uh, one, well, the addresses of 114 Maury and 156 Maury Avenue, uh, Atlanta, Georgia? Yes. Okay. And um, and when you took these photos, um, do you recall the reason for uh, being called out to that those locations? An assault case. Okay. And do you? Um, Do you know who the lead investigator was associated with this? No. I'm going to approach you just uh, for with looking at your report associated with this uh, matter. Uh, refresh your recollection. Yes. I'm approaching you with what has been identified as states 43 DDDD. And um, just here. When you've had a chance to have your memory refreshed, you can look back up at me and I'll continue to ask any questions. Yes. So, um, has your memory been refreshed? Yes. Okay. Um, and with respect to the question that I asked you about who was the lead investigator, who was that? Officer Hart. Okay. And um, what is the um, the nature of the call to which you were uh, asked now that you had your memory refreshed? An assault case. Okay. And what uh, did you do when you arrived to these locations to uh, respond? 
process the scene, which take photographs, collect evidence. Were there, uh, what, were there uh, projectiles that you recovered? Hang on. No projectiles, but cartridge casings. And um, how many cartridge casings did you recover? Eleven. Okay. What else did you? What else, if anything, did you recover from this particular? Well, these crime scenes. Um, I also collected a black rifle magazine, um, a piece of rifle debris. Um, yep, and then eleven cartridge cases. And did you perform any analysis associated with those project, uh, cartridge cases? Uh, I processed the shell cases for. Latent fingerprints, and no one found. Okay. And <clears throat> just a few more questions before publishing with you. Uh, did you, the addresses, 114 Morgan, 156 Morgan, do you know those locations to be close in proximity to, to one another? Yes, they were. Okay. And why might you have taken or relocated to two different addresses within that area or street? Um, sustained. Um, you can't answer that. I'll ask you a different question. Um, was there evidence of value at those two different locations for you to take pictures of? Yes. Okay. And um, as to the state's exhibits that have been put before you, identified previously um, as state's exhibits um, 13 DDD D through 42 DDD. They barely, uh, do they depict, uh, barely and accurately depict the crime scenes uh, that uh, have been previously identified um, as you captured them on, on that day? Yes. And at this time, Your Honor, the state now moves to admit state's exhibits uh, 13 DDD through 42 DDD into evidence. You're admitted. Um, permission to publish this if you select me, Your Honor. Nay. The incident number associated, APD incident number associated with big, these locations or addresses. Do you recall that uh, number? 1505-03213. All right, now what before you is published state's exhibit 13DDDD. Is that capture the address marker of the location that you started off with first? Yes. Okay. All right. And I'll publish in the next state's exhibit. Um, is this a general or broader view of that same address location? Yes. And does uh, are are these vehicles vehicles that were of interest to you during your processing of the crime scene? Yes. Okay. Um, and this is state's exhibit fourteen D D D D, showing you now the next state's exhibit. Before you is state's exhibit. <clears throat> Excuse me, 16 D, 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 D. Um, do you see evidence markers on this photograph? Yes. And uh, these evidence markers pertinent to the 156 Maury Avenue, uh, Southeast Atlanta address uh, incident location? Yes. <clears throat> and would you have placed as many uh, placards or markers as pertinent to the amount of evidence that you saw on the ground? Yes. All right. Next state's exhibit. 
I see the marker. Okay. Do you see anything right at the bottom? Well, let me zoom back. You see right at the bottom of the screen at the page beneath the evidence marker? Okay. Um, and what do you see that to be? Cartridge casing. Okay. And would you have taken and placed uh, single shot photos of each such photo of all of your markers at this? Yes. All right. Next day's exhibit. All right. Um, at this point in the photos, and now showing you states exhibit 27 D D D D. What uh, is this fair to say this is when you relocated? Yes. And what is the address number associated with this uh, location featured in state 27 D D D D? 114 Maury Avenue. All right. And do you see that address featured on this photograph? Yes. steps. the magazine or from the magazine. for latent fingerprints and um, submitted to the APD crime lab for further processing. And did that uh, just about conclude uh, your involvement with this particular APD case number associated with those two locations? Yes. All right. Uh, just a brief result, Ms. Stay State has no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. All right. Does the defense have questions for this witness? Thank you. No questions for this witness. No. No, Your Honor. No. All right. Um, you are free to go. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Call your next witness. Your Honor, the state calls Ms. Bailey to stand.
Teresa Bailey, T E R E S A B A I L E Y. Good afternoon, Miss Bailey. How are you doing, ma'am? Good. Good. Can you tell the jury where you resided back on January 19th of 2015? 807 Prior Street, Atlanta, Georgia, 30315. Now, how long had you lived at 807 Prior Street back in 2015, ma'am? Since 1999. I mean, yeah, 1999. So a good while? Yeah. Now, what part of the city is that area called? McCannaville. Okay. And is there a Hendrix Avenue near... Prior Street. Yes. How close is it? Um, I'll say right there together. Okay. Did you, having lived there since 1999, get to know your neighbors that lived on either Prior or Hendricks Avenue? I did. And if I was to walk out of your front door on 807 Prior, hang a right, what's the first street I would hit? Hendricks. And if I took a right again on Hendricks Avenue, ma'am, what is the first houses who live there on Hendricks Avenue? Uh, the first house on the corner? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Miss Kiva. And who was next to Miss Kiva? Uh, uh, I think Mr. Tommy now. Who back in 2015 lived where Mr. Tommy lives now? Oh God, I can't call their names, but they did and gone. Who was the neighbor of that house? Third on the right. Miss Janice. And do you know if Miss Janice had any children? I only know her of Kennebu. Okay. Now that house where Miss Janice and Kenny Boo lived. If I were to walk out their back door, do they have a backyard in that house? Uh, somewhat of a backyard. If I were to hop, do they have a back fence? Yes. If I were to hop that back fence, where would I be in relation to your house on 807 Prior? In my backyard. Okay. So if you wanted to come over to that house, you could just hop the fence and you would be in Miss Janice and Kenny Bruce's backyard? No. Oh, if I want to hop from If my you yard. wanted to. Yes. Okay. Now, who was Miss Janice and her son's neighbor, the fourth house down the, the one right next to it? Who lived there? Our uh, Miss Pinky grandmother. Okay. And back in 2015, was Miss Pinky's grandmother alive or has she passed away? I think she was deceased. Okay. Now, Ms. Bailey, on January 19, 2015, were you home? I think so. I believe so. Can you tell the members of the jury what happened that night? Anything significant? What happened at night? Yes, ma'am. I think I was in my room, bedroom. Now, is your bedroom, was it close to Prior Street or closer to Miss Janice and Kenny Boo's house? Closer to... I say Miss Janice and Kennedy Hall because that's my backyard. Okay. And you're sitting in your bedroom. What happens that stands out to you? Well, that stood out to me that night. Did anything happen to your home? It did. What happened? Well, I don't know until the police came and told me. That did, and well, at first I heard my daughter say, Sustained. Without saying what your daughter said, was your daughter calm or was she excited? I don't know. I was in my room. And did she run into your room? Uh, I don't recall. That's all right. Now, did you hear anything before police arrived? No, I didn't. When police got there, what happened? Uh, 
I think, or by the time I came out of my room to go to the front. Yes, ma'am. Where the front door is. Or he was at the door. And he asked me, I think, let me think. I'm he asked me, did I know? He asked me, did I know? One brief moment, I'm Ms. Bailey. <laughs> oh, I can't hear. Your Honor, Ms. Bailey, after that officer came to your door, did he walk around any part of your house with you? Yes, after he showed me two holes on the outside of my house. Now, were these two holes, where were they in relation to your bedroom you just described? Uh, one was on the outside, on the side of my house. Yes, ma'am. Where I have a ramp, a handicap ramp. So it's one by my bedroom window, and I think the other one by the bathroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, did you or any law, did any law enforcement ever come inside your house? Yes, the so law enforcement asked me, was it okay for him to come in my home to my bedroom? And did you let them come in? I did. Now, when you got to your bedroom, did you, were you with them while uh, they were walking through your home? Yes. Now, did y'all ever get to your bedroom? Yes. What did you see in your bedroom once you got there? I didn't see anything. The officer seen to impart it out to me. Objection. So, Miss Bailey, did you ever have to fix anything in your bedroom after that night? Uh, well, I, yes, I did. What did you have to fix? The bullet holes. Where were they? Where the officer showed me in my room by the window. And irregardless of the officer, did you stay in that bedroom after that night? Uh, I can't recall if I did or not, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Did you ever have to, did anything inside your bedroom get hit with a bullet? The officer did point it out to me and I saw that the bullet hole did come through my mattress. Did you ever, uh, did it come in through the wall or the window? The wall. Now, was anyone else home with you other than your daughter when this happened? Not that I recall. And after officers were at your home, did anything else, uh, did they ever come back? Or was, it, was there anything else that happened that stood out to you in relation to that night? Other than that, that was it. And pictures, that was it. About how long would you say that they were at your home that night, Miss Bailey? Oh, quite a good while. Can't recall how long, but it was a good little while. Had your home had had your home ever been shot before or after that night? No. And do you have uh, any idea what was behind that, the shooting of your home? I do not. And Miss Bailey, is there any other information in relation to that shooting on January 19, 2015 that you think is relevant to share with the members of this jury? No, I don't. One brief moment, Miss Bailey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. No further questions uh, by me. Any questions for Miss Bailey from the No, Your Honor. All right, thank you for your time. You're excused. Okay, thank Call. you. Call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. The state calls uh, former Officer Fagan to the stand.
First name is Sean, last name is Fagan. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Last name Fagan, F-A-G-A-N. Good afternoon, former officer Fagan. That's correct. Uh, how long did you work in the Atlanta department? Uh, approximately five years. And when you worked there, uh, what zone were you primarily assigned to? Uh, zone three. And during those five years, were you patrol? Yes, sir. Uh, was what beat within zone three were you working January 19, 2015? I was assigned to beat 303. Um, occasionally, we would have to go to different beats, but um, I would assume that it was beat 303 that day. And does beat three or beat 303 within zone three, does that cover Hendrix Avenue and Pryor Street? Yes. Now, had you been to that area before in your career? Yes. Were you familiar with those streets? Yes. Now, back on January 19, 2015, what was your shift? Was it daytime? Was it nighttime? It was the evening watch shift, which would run from uh, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And on that night, did you ever have the, uh, were you ever, did you ever respond to a 213 Hendrix Avenue? Yes. So can you tell the jury what time did you respond to that address? It's uh, listed as 2130, which would be 930 p.m. Okay. And when you got there, what did you see? Uh, they're we were responding to a person shot. Um, There's an individual that had sustained a gunshot wound uh, to the back. Did you, uh, when you saw that person, what was their name? I'd have to refresh my memory. Would looking at a copy of your report help refresh your memory? Yes. Handing the witness what uh, I will mark as one triple delta golf two. Uh, who was the individual that was shot when you got to 213 Hendricks Avenue? Mr. Terrence Reese. Now, did he ever receive any medical treatment? Yes, uh, we had called Grady uh, where he was transported to Grady Hospital. And were there any other officers that were at that location with you? Uh, that night? Uh, yes, uh, Officer McGovern. Had you worked with him? Yes. Was he in the same zone that you worked, Zone 3? Yes. After uh, encountering Mr. Reese, did you ever go to any other locations nearby? Yes. What prompted you to go to another location? Uh, we were notified, or I was notified on radio of uh, potential second location that had been affected. And where... Yes. So we were notified on the radio of uh, another location that was affected. What was that other location? Um, I'd have to refresh my memory. That's perfectly fine. Just look up at me once your memory is refreshed. The 807 Prior Street. Okay. Now... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to approach, and if any defense counsel, I have one Delta, Delta, Delta Golf with me. So I am approaching the witness with what's been marked as one triple delta golf. Officer Fagan, uh, do you recognize that? I do. And would what you have before you aid your testimony in the jury for this incident? Yes. What is that? Uh, this is a, the street, uh, Prior Street, as well as Hendricks Avenue. This is the location of the incident um, where we responded. Your Honor, 
for demonstrative purposes, the state moves to introduce one triple delta goal into evidence. Okay. Okay. The state's going to publish one triple delta goal. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit um, to the left of this. Do you see numbers? And is this, what's the street on the bottom? Hendricks Street. And what's the street that's kind of perpendicular to it? Prior Street. I'm going to see if there is a wooden pointer. And I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind just standing up, can you point to where 213 Hendricks is where you first responded? And can you show members of the jury, you had mentioned an 807 Prior Street. Where is that house? It's going to be right up here on the Prior Street perpendicular to Hendricks Avenue. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you may be seated. Now, once you got to 807 Prior, did you encounter anybody? I did. Who did you encounter? Need to refresh my memory. That, that's all right. You may. Once your memory is refreshed, just look up at me. The homeowner, Teresa Bailey. And um, did you, without saying what she said, did you speak with her? Yes. Was there anyone else present with her? I believe her daughter was. Did you speak with her? Yes. Now, after speaking with them, did you uh, ever speak again with Officer McGovern? I do believe so. And after speaking with him, what did you do next in your investigation? Uh, we then moved back from prior uh, to Hendricks Avenue to canvas the area for... What were you canvassing the area for? Uh, additional shell casings, uh, victims, um, property damage, anything related to this incident. And once you began canvassing the area, did you see any other homes that had any damage or people? Yes. What was the first home you saw? Um, I'm going to refresh my memory. That, that's perfectly fine. So at 213 Hendrick Street, and 197 Hendrick Street, both. So when you first responded, uh, you went to 213 Hendricks with the person shot? That's correct. Uh, and then was did you know at the time when you first went out there that that home had been struck as well? No. Now, can you point out for the jury when you left 807 prior, where is 197 Hendricks? So we left this location right here. I came back. And 197 is right here. And 213 is two houses to the left? That's correct. Now, when you got to 197 Hendrix, what did you see? I'm going to refresh my memory for just a second. Okay. What did you see at 197 Hendrix? observed a, what appeared to be a bullet through the right side window into the house. Now, did you encounter anyone or did you ever see anyone that was at that 197 Hendrix? I did. Um, did they, do you remember their name? I knocked the top of my head, but I could refresh. Yes. Okay. If, you, if your memory is refreshed, just let me know. Uh, Mrs. Chavez. And did she let you come inside her home? Yes. Uh, when you went inside her home, did you see any other damage or defects inside? Yes, there was a bullet through the wall, I believe in her, in her bedroom. 
Now, did she show you anything else? And by anything else, I mean any kind of document, photograph, any anything else? Uh, yes. Objection. Your Honor. Yes. Now, what kind of category of thing did she show you? Social media. And what specific type of social media? Instagram. Okay. Without stating what was on that, um, what did you do after being shown that Instagram social media from the homeowner of 197 Hendricks Avenue? I then uh, left that location and I went down to um, what we were considered the pool house. What is the pool house? Uh, pool house is a it's a house that has a a pool a pool table in the backyard um, where a lot of guys would typically meet up. Had you been familiar with that pool house before from working that zone? Yes. Where what's the address of the pool house? Refresh my memory. Yes, you may. One ninety three Hendricks Avenue. Can you point out for the jury where one ninety three Hendricks is on this map? It's right here. Now, had you been to any houses before on Hendricks Avenue in working zone three? Yes. Now I'm going to show you what's already been admitted. While this is coming up, I'm going to publish what's already been admitted as one triple delta Mike. After, or what did you, when you went to 193 Hendrix, did you knock on the door or what did you do? I knocked on the front door. Did anyone answer? No. Uh, did you, what did you do after no one answered at 193 Hendrix? I walked around to the rear of the, the residence. And what did you see around the rear? A pool table. Was there anyone out there? No. Now, while you were on scene, were did you ever notify anyone with the crime scene unit? Yes. Now, do you remember who specifically, did, or let me ask you this, did anyone from the crime scene unit come on scene? Yes. Who? Refresh your memory. Okay, you may, and just look up at me when your memory's refreshed. Uh, Turner was a crime scene tech. And were you on scene when they came out? Yes. And were there any uh, shell casings recovered? There were. Uh, can you describe what they were? Forty caliber. And how many were there? Uh, three. Okay. Now, on the screen, it should be in both in front of you and larger behind you, is one triple delta mic. Do you recognize that on the screen? I do. Um, what is that? Uh, 193 Hendricks Avenue and uh, what was known in the neighborhood as the pool house. Okay, thank you. Now, when you, uh, I want to also ask you, when investigator Turner, or not investigator, but crime scene tech Turner was with you, did you and him ever go back to 807 Prior Street? I, I'm not sure, I, I, I believe so, I would like. Yep, yeah, you, you, you may re use your report. Yes, that is correct. And was anything collected or photographed at 807 Briar? Uh, yes, uh, bullet holes in the back of the house. And uh, was it the back left of the house or the back right of the house? It was the back right of the house. Okay. And when, uh, after 807 Briar, you remember you mentioned you went back to 213 Hendricks Avenue? That's correct. 
was anything found or collected at 213 Hendricks Avenue? I believe we had found uh, additional gunshots or holes through the house. Okay. Now, when you work patrols, uh, do you ever get a morning or routine briefing? Yes. What kind of things are you briefed on when you come on shift? Uh, things that are... You may answer. Uh, things that are relevant to um, the climate of what's going on, um, such as gang violence, shootings, uh, look out for vehicles, uh, any, any, any bit of crime that's happening in that area. Are you ever briefed on homicides in the area? Yes. When you responded on January 19, 2015 to initially 213 Hendricks Avenue, were you aware of any homicides that had happened near your beat? Yes. Uh, what was the location in general of that homicide you were aware of? It was a You may answer, sir. It was, uh, there was just a murder at uh, a barber shop on McDaniel Street. And when you work patrol, would the gang unit ever be notified when you responded to calls? We would make that decision on site. What are some examples of cases where you would not notify the gang unit? Uh, like a, a crime of passion, um, uh, a, ra a random shooting, two people getting in an argument, um, things that, you know, j just a typical, uh, the typical gun violence would not be um, notified to a gang unit. We'd have to articulate in some way or fashion um, how it would be uh, gang violence. Uh, had you, have you in your career in general ever notified the gang unit or radio to get someone from that unit to come to the scene? Yes. Specifically on January 19, 2015, with this 213 Hendricks Avenue, uh, 807 Prior Street, and 197 Hendricks, was anyone from the gang unit notified? Yes. Who was notified? Investigator Price. And when you respond to scenes, um, other than a scene where uh, someone is deceased on, on scene, is the homicide unit ever notified? Yes, they are. What are some circumstances where they would be notified um, without someone having been murdered when they arrived? Uh, we notify homicide if we think they're going to die um, or if we believe it's relevant to an ongoing case. Was anyone from the Atlanta Police Department homicide unit notified for this January 19, 2015 case? Yes. Who specifically was notified within the Atlanta Police Department homicide unit? Uh, Investigator Thorpe. Officer Fagan, no further questions. Thank you. Are there questions for this witness by the defense? No questions on behalf of Mr. Williams. No, no. Okay. Thank you for your time and you are excused. Jerry, shall do it all right or you need a break? Okay, let's take our uh, afternoon break. for a few minutes.